Harry's wife. We are a joke. Narcissists hate to be ridiculed. Being a subject of ridicule is challenge fuel. It suggests that not taking the narcissist seriously makes the narcissist not have a sense of control. The narcissist is made to feel pathetic, weak, vulnerable. The narcissist wants to be taken serious because the narcissist is a serious person. The narcissist is serious in politics, serious in being a bananatarian, is serious in wanting to rule the world, is serious in what they've written, is serious in what they've filmed. And if you ridicule the narcissist, you are undermining the narcissist's need for control, whilst of course providing fuel, but still, you threaten that sense of control. Remember also, of course, that certain individuals in the fuel matrix are seen as particular extensions of the narcissist. Everybody is an extension of the narcissist to some extent who forms part of the fuel matrix, but certain individuals are much more important extensions. And of course, the most important one is the intimate partner primary source, which is Harry, in the case of Harry's wife. What Harry does, Harry's wife claims as hers. His achievements are her achievements. His contacts are his, his contacts are her contacts. His network becomes her network. But also, the activities and actions that he engages in impact upon her in terms of where he fucks things up. Where he is ridiculed. That ridicule can bounce back against her until such time as she cuts him loose and determines that was your fault, not mine. But because she's drawn him into their shared fantasy, the activities that he engages in, the responses to them, impact upon her. And this has been noted by that bastion of journalistic excellence, Heat Magazine, which tells us, every time Prince Harry does another TV interview, his popularity rating seems to sink further. And yet, last week, or a little bit below, but further back, brought us his most in-depth and revealing conversation ever. The Royal Rebel spoke to trauma expert Gabor Marte for 90 long minutes, unpicking his childhood and past drug use, and revealing how Harry's wife apparently saved him. See parts pass him for the analysis there, and this maintenance of a belief that Harry's wife has saved him is demonstrative of the way that she has such a level of control over him. But it seems even the former actress thinks he may have gone too far, as she told friends she's worried they're becoming a laughingstock. Becoming? You already are, courtesy of South Park, Chris Rock, and a thousand and one commenters and creators across YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, etc. Harry's wife doesn't want to censor Harry. Bullshit. She does, and she will. And she's proud that he's continuing to tell his truth, Notice once again the use of that phrase, his truth, not the truth, his truth. But she's also worried he's crossed a line. Interpreting that for you, Harry's wife will censor Harry, and she regularly does. She's now concerned that his flapping of the gums has resulted in damage to her facade. And therefore, he's crossed a line. And that line is the one in relation to control, and it's causing her a problem. This information was relayed by an insider, apparently close to the former Suits star, who, you didn't know this already, I'm sure, moved to California with Harry in 2020. After and again, I'm surprised that you weren't aware of this already, the pair quit royal life. I suppose it's only going to be a matter of time before they tell us that they have two children and what their ages are, and that they've moved to Monte Show. The article continues by explaining she's concerned that people are laughing at him and at them as a couple. Correct? They are, and of course her concern is because it threatens her sense of control, because it damages the way she wants to be seen. It feels like his confessions have backfired, and again giving people a stick to beat them both with again. He went too far with his last chat, and really overshared, especially talking so much about drugs. During the conversation, Harry, 38, told the noted author that cocaine didn't do anything for him, but marijuana actually really did help me. See also where I have explained how his drugs, uh, drug abuse will definitely be used against him. He went on to discuss his regular use of psychedelic drugs, 
and explained it was the cleaning of the windscreen, the removal of life's filters, that it brought him a sense of relaxation, release, comfort, lightness that I managed to hold on to for a period of time. I started doing it recreationally, and it helped me deal with the traumas and pains of the past. So much so, he keeps talking about them, banging on about them, so one really has to question to what extent that it actually has helped him. I would suggest that it actually hasn't. The chat followed confessions in his memoir, Wa, that he'd also taken magic mushrooms, hallucinating that a bin was speaking to him. Outraged critics quickly condemned the Duke for putting out the message that mind-altering substances are good for your mental health, calling his behaviour hugely irresponsible, dangerous and reckless. And it's exactly this reaction that Harry's wife, <coughs> 41, was concerned about. Our insider continues, she gets that Harry wanted to educate people, but it's just not a good look that he's singing the praises of illegal mind-altering substances. Their many critics have had a field day, painting Harry as this spaced-out weirdo who's totally lost the plot. Harry, who also confessed during the interview, the more my enemies criticise me, the more I need to share, which also depends how stupid he is, also spoke openly about his incredibly painful childhood, echoing a section of his memoir where he said he didn't get enough hugs growing up. He revealed that it's made him more affectionate with his children, Archie 3 and Lilibet 1, told you they'd get mentioned eventually, explaining, I make sure that I smother them with love and affection. I, as a father, feel a huge responsibility that I don't pass on any traumas or any negative experiences that I've had as a kid or as a man. But instead, I'll just keep fucking talking about them. Later that week, news broke that Archie and Lilibet had finally been given the titles of Prince and Princess, with the Sussex spokesperson declaring the children's titles had become a birthright since their grandfather became monarch, yada yada, boring, boring. Of course, it opened the couple up to more attacks, with one online commenter accusing them of hypocrisy on another level. Another comment pointed out, they make fun of royal formality protocol and traditions, but they want all the f fancy titles. And of course, this is part of the hypocrisy that has been identified previously, and for which I have explained in parts passim. The fact is, they are a joke. They're joke people. He, because he's a dimwit who can't keep f himself from flapping his gums, her, because she's empty on the inside, and is a huge hypocrite that has demonstratively demonstrated that she's an unpleasant person, but thinks that she isn't. Their popularity has plummeted, and it once again shows the extent, to the, uh, bearing in mind you can weigh up whether you believe it to be accurate or not, that should it be correct that she's expressing concerns about Harry having gone too far, it's a little bit fucking late for that now. But that again is demonstrative of the mid-range nature of her narcissism, that she's content to let him go on and on and on, and then eventually starts to say, ooh, I think he might have gone too far. You don't say. No shit, Sherlock. Once again demonstrates that she's not that bright, and the way that her narcissism continues to function in the moment, and that she is not this cold, calculating beast that some people think that she is. The evidence shows that she is not. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.